Our next two speakers are leaders on the rise. As members of our community leadership corps here in Chicago, they have challenged themselves to build the change they want to see in their city. Emily Nordquist, who you will hear from first, is working to spread financial literacy. And Alex Perez Garcia is battling the stigma around access to mental health care. Please welcome Emily Nordquist. As I sit before a room of 20 young women, I begin to listen as they tell me their experiences with money. I look over at my friend Janae, and she is running around taking photos, and I feel so lucky to have her on my team. Janae is one of those women who doesn't sleep. She works full time, and she's pursuing two master's degrees at night. When I ask her how she possibly finds the time to also support our project in creating spaces for young women to speak candidly about money, she tells me about her 18-year-old niece, Deja. Janae was able to go to college and therefore had access to real financial literacy resources. This is what has allowed her to find the ability to live independently and to explore new careers that are in alignment with her own values. She tells me that it is her personal mission to see to it that her 18-year-old niece will find that same type of freedom. As I listen to her story, I can appreciate how both of our first understandings of money are deeply rooted in both family and identity. For me, I think about how important my dad and my sister were to me when we lost our family business, had to sell our home, and help each other through a remarkably tough time. This feeling of connectedness with Janae is what allows us to talk about finance and allow other young women to do the same in a way that goes far beyond just the numbers. Because we have welcomed vulnerability into the conversation of money, we have been able to meet with 15 community leaders in Chicago and hear from over 30 young women. We've listened to their stories, their fears, their questions, and we've sat together and brainstormed ways in which we can help each other create tools and resources to help young people better understand and talk about money. Unfortunately, this kind of work is hard to find. As young women, we've been told that we don't understand how to manage or invest money, and we don't deserve to make as much of it, and we don't understand enough about it, so we should just step out of the conversation. When we collectively let go of the fear and shame around money, we step into our true power. And when we step into our true power, the world shifts. Thank you. Austin, you Chicago student, talented violinist, social justice advocate. Michelle, nonprofit founder, wellness provider, devoted mother. Chris, rap music enthusiast, community leader, strong Southsider. All these beautiful people have been impacted by mental health, yet mental health stigma is the number one reason people of color choose not to seek support, sometimes taking up to 10 years. About a month ago, I launched the Beautiful You Project, a digital community around mental health fueled by voices of color. Since launching, we've had over 1,500 views and 1,400 minutes read on our blog and counting. <laughs> This progress is not without setbacks. Early on, I felt the dread and fear of failure building inside of me. I wanted to quit, until I looked at my phone and saw I had a message from an old college friend, someone who I hadn't heard from in months. After seeing our work online, she had told me she was going to therapy, and I was the first to know. More messages came since then. 
a high school friend coming out with her queerness and mental health through art, a teacher trying to communicate with her students in crisis, my own partner, who after many years of hiding, decided he needed help. One thing became very clear. People were listening, people were reading, people were watching. President Obama once said, if you listen hard enough, everybody's got a sacred story. We need to tell our sacred stories, so here's mine. I'm a first-generation Latina living with mental illness. I am a dedicated nonprofit professional. I am beautiful. <laughs> My father told me, Ijita, your parents are fighters. We came alone, and when people tried to put us down, we did not flinch. We stood tall, back straight, chin up. When we spoke, they realized their mistake. In the disability community, we say nothing about us without us. Nada sobre nosotros sin nosotros. <laughs> Our stories matter. So keep sharing, keep writing, keep going.